Hello, I'm going to attempt to show you a demo on what's involved with installing a free valid certificate on a Windows instance running a Windows web application. This particular web application happens to be a .NET Core 2.0 application, a real basic one. I just generated it from Visual Studio um, and told it to do a new .NET Core 2.0 app and I deployed it up to uh, the cloud, but this could be on any server that you have, it doesn't have to be in the cloud. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use uh, a Let's Encrypt, and the inspiration to this was a class that I took from a gentleman named Nick Janitakis, and I'll provide a link to, to his course, as well as a link to all of the pertinent things that you'll see in this video at the bottom of this video. So his course is an excellent one. It basically teaches you everything you need to know about Let's Encrypt and it provides you with production ready scripts that run on Ubuntu and Linux and other Unix based servers. For this example, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this, how you can install this on a Windows box. So right now, this particular application is running over HTTP and not HTTPS. Um, and first of all, what I wanted to mention, uh, there's a lot of information about Let's Encrypt, but Let's Encrypt is the real deal, and they are kind of like an open source thing, if you will, and they have all these sponsors that donate, and these sponsors are big time, you know, Cisco, Chrome, Facebook, Mozilla, um, you know, so there's there's a lot of people out there in the industry that are donating to this. Their main mission is to try to get everybody running on HTTPS. I know that late last year, Google has announced that they were going to reduce the ratings of those folks whose websites don't run on HTTPS, um, and as well as having the Google Chrome browser kind of notify you too that, hey, when you visit that page, the site is not going to be secured, so people will see that. So that's kind of alarming. So it's really a good idea to start, um, you know, putting certificates on every single website out there that you do for that reason alone. And also, you, you know, to gain the trust of your customers. So one of the first things that you'll need to do for Let's Encrypt is you'll need to uh, install a ACME client, and ACME stands for Automated Certificate Management Environment. And it's kind of like an interface. Um, you can write a client as long as it implements that interface to, you know, it can go out there. Let's Encrypt will go ahead and uh, uh, issue you some certificates. So the client that I'm gonna use is uh, PKI Sharp. And like I said, I'll provide the link for it. Um, it's a GitHub page. And I was, uh, you know, uh, Nick had mentioned um, in a correspond corresponding email that um, it would be a really good idea to change this uh, or to see if you can get this script to issue out test certificates with Let's Encrypt, like for example, the staging URL. And I think that's a fantastic idea and that might be something I look into potentially in the future for another video. Um, but for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and download the executable and have it issue a, a certificate from the production URL because you are kind of limited to how many certificates you can generate per week, especially, that's important, especially if you're testing things out. Um, Let's Encrypt may actually stop after 10 or 20 or whatever the number is, and then you'll have to wait, you know, a couple more days or whatever till you can get uh, some more certificates issued from them for the same domain. So anyways, and one last thing I wanted to mention is they only provide, to the best of my knowledge, uh, DV certificates, so domain validation certificates. So they don't do, um, I, there's another certificate type where you can actually see the company name show up and, and I can't wait, organizational certificates or something like that. They also do um, SAN certificates, which allow for multiple subdomains. So and the certificates need to be renewed every three months with Let's Encrypt. So that's, so they encourage, you know, you that you have like maybe a scheduled job that runs um, every so often, maybe every two months or whatever, uh, it goes out and renews your certificates. Uh, it's recommended from what I was reading and hearing that 
you do the renewal process, uh, you know, don't wait until the last minute on, you know, up to midnight of the third month because you may have some problems and you don't want clients going to your site the very next day and you not being able to get a new certificate. So it doesn't hurt to renew every two months or whatever. So having said all that, I'm going to go ahead and download this client. So when you're on this page, go ahead and, you know, you click on this latest release. And inside of there, you're going to see this uh, zip file. It may be different depending on when you look at this. Um, the name of it may be different. But anyways, go ahead and save it. And I'm going to go and since this is a brand new machine that I provisioned up in the cloud, I'm going to create a folder. And I'm going to save, save it inside of there. Okay. So I will open the folder, double click in there. Let's pull everything out of it. Although, you know, let's see here. We really only need one file. Well, actually we need more than that. So just pull everything out of it. The next thing that we're going to want to do is open up a PowerShell window. So I am going to open up PowerShell, I'm gonna run it as administrator, not sure if that really matters. Um, and then I'm gonna to change to this directory just to get everything set up. Okay, so before I do the, get the Let's Encrypt certificate, what I'm gonna do is show you, so this is HTTP right here. Um, if I try to run HTTPS, It's just gonna spin and spin and spin because we don't have HTTPS enabled yet. So before I get the uh, actual Let's Encrypt certificate, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a self-signed certificate. And it's something that um, as a developer, it's a, it's a good thing to do before, you know, before you actually go to production and get a production level certificate like Let's Encrypt, for example, while you're in the develop and developing mode, you can create a self-signed certificate for your server, deploy your application, and just test that everything looks okay. You will get that funny looking um, screen that says, you know, it's all panic, panicky looking, and I'll show you that, but it'll just basically say that it's an untrusted certificate, and that's okay for development purposes. You probably don't want to run that in production though. So if you click here, and then you go to server certificates, I'm in IIS here, and here this option is called create self-signed certificate. So I'm going to call this test untrusted and I'll just select personal. Okay, and the next step I'm going to do basically is go into my default website and I'm gonna create a binding. So right now the only binding I have out there is HTTP, so that just basically says HTTP is the only supported protocol for that. I'm gonna add HTTPS. So added a binding, call it this. My certificate is gonna be that self-signed untrusted certificate. I'll go ahead and we'll add that. I'm gonna delete this HTTP binding. Okay, we'll close this. Now I'm gonna to go to SSL settings and I'm gonna select require SSL and accept. I'm gonna hit the apply button and, and I'm just gonna restart the site. And then we'll see, we'll see what happens here if we try to. So now if I try to run HTTPS, give it a second here. Okay, I'm actually glad this happened here. Um, the HTTPS is still spinning, but it has absolutely nothing to do with what what we just did here. Um, this is kind of a side side topic, and uh, if you're not using AWS, then you can disregard this. But I thought I would include this in here because this is something that's burned me a few times. And um, if HTTPS is still spinning in your AWS console for your EC2 instance. Uh, it has to do with the security group since I, I actually provisioned this with CloudFormation, the script that I wrote. So if you take a look at the security groups, I just wanted to show you this for that instance. 
the inbound one does not have H443 opened up, so that's why it's spinning. So I just need to go ahead and add a new rule here for port 443. You know, I keep doing this. It's just one of those things. Um, you know, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, I guess. So now I've just enabled port 443. Now if we go and click this HTTPS, all of a sudden, this is what we wanted to see. Um, and like I said, for the uh, AWS thing, forget about it if you're not using AWS. I just happen to be using it to, to spin up these instances. Anyways, um, after you do the binding trick with IS and uh, you know, and, and attach your self-signed certificate. So if we take a look here, refreshing this again, here's the binding and here's the self-signed certificate. And if you try to visit this site, um, you're gonna get this screen. Your connection is not secure. And I'm gonna delete my regular HTTP one, which will no longer run. See, it's, that's gonna spin because I removed the HTTP protocol. So we'll close that down. But getting back to this, the self-signed certificate is why you're seeing this particular case right here. That's perfectly okay. Um, for development mode, you just click advanced. You say add the exception. Confirm the security exception, and lo and behold, you're there. Um, and if you take a look at the certificate up here, you get this warning icon on your padlock. We'll take a look at the more information. We can view the certificate. You can see it's a self-signed certificate. Um, it's all fine and dandy. So now we can do our development there. But now it comes time, let's say, to deploy this thing to production. So in that case, um, we need a real certificate. So let's get one from Let's Encrypt and let's make that this icon go away and have it replaced with a shiny neat green icon so that Google likes us and your ratings get high and all that good stuff. So we went ahead and extracted this client to a directory. So let's see here, that was this directory right here. And I happen to be in that directory running PowerShell Look for your let's encrypt.exe file in there. We'll go ahead and run it. Um, you have some options. The one, you know, you have a bunch of options here, I guess, renew schedule and all that. Since this is the brand new site, I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new certificate, select N. And you have some other options in here. Like I said, the SAN certificates allow for multiple subdomains to be included in one certificate, but in this case, we just have one domain name. So I'm gonna choose option number one. Yeah. And it's traversing a site here, and it finds the one site, which is this one right here. So that's fine, so you select that. Go ahead and, I don't care about the email address in this case. I'll say yes to that question. Now it's actually going out to Let's Encrypt and it's doing the challenges back and forth um, just to make sure everything's okay. No errors, so everything seems to be looking okay here. So let's do a quit. And what I wanted you to see now is if we go to this default website and we edit the bindings again, or we look at the bindings, and if I click on that and do edit, lo and behold, the PowerShell script that we just ran goes ahead and installed the certificate from Let's Encrypt, um, and it just basically set the website certificate to, to be that one. So what does that mean? So what that means now is if I bring this page up where we once had this, if I just refresh it, all of a sudden it turns green. And if I highlight over that, um, you'll see that it's verified by Let's Encrypt. It's a secure connection. It's very happy. Let's see here. Okay. It's a little annoying pop-ups there. Um, we got a secure connection and it looks like we're pretty much good to go. Um, we can view the certificate. Everything looks great there. So that's pretty much it for um, this demonstration on how to uh, get this site up on a Windows box running Let's Encrypt. And plus you got to see the added feature of uh, 
you know, if you're using AWS to create an instance, you want to make sure that you open up uh, the security group of that instance to support poor support <laughs> port 443. So um, if you're not using AWS, don't worry about that. Um, but thank you for watching. I hope this helps. And, um, you know, I hope this helps get your sites enabled with HTTPS. These, like I said, these certificates are completely free. So look at the bottom of the YouTube video because I included some links for all this stuff. And again, thank you so much for watching. So you have yourself a great one. Bye-bye.